Hi everyone, and welcome to another video. My name is Simon D'Entremont, and I am a working wildlife and nature photographer living in Eastern Canada. Over the last five, six or seven years, I've shot 750,000 photos. That's right, three quarters of a million photos. And two thirds of them I've shot with teleconverters. That's right, over half a million photos. I'm gonna be talking today about whether or not these are worth it. They come with benefits, but also with drawbacks. I'm gonna walk you through those so you can make a wise decision. I think we all know someone who's tried to put a two times teleconverter on the 75 to 300 millimeter lens that came with their camera and been disappointed with the results. I don't want you to make the same mistake. If you stay till the end, I'll give you two special tips. Number one is, what is the killer scenario where this two times teleconverter is actually amazing? And number two, what is the right technique needed to get the best out of a teleconverter? That's right, they don't come working easily right out of the box. So what is a teleconverter? In some parts of the world, they're also called extenders. And in fact, a teleconverter is a magnifying glass, which adds focal length to your lens. So you put it between your camera and your lens. This 1.4 teleconverter adds 40% to my focal length, but I also lose one stop of light. This two-time teleconverter doubles the focal length of your lens, but you lose two stops of light. So putting this 1.4 teleconverter on my 500 millimeter f4 lens makes it a 700 millimeter f5.6 lens. If I put the two times teleconverter on it, it becomes a 1000 millimeter F8 lens. To put this 1.4 teleconverter on my 100 to 400 lens turns it into a 140 to 560. And that at 560 millimeters, it goes from F5.6 to F8. Choosing whether or not to put a teleconverter on your lens is a balancing act of whether or not the benefits will outweigh the risks. Some things may not be impacted, like the minimum focus distance, but there are some things that are impacted that you need to figure out whether or not you use one. The drawbacks are, image quality, autofocusability, autofocus speed, and field of view. So let's talk about these. So to talk about image quality, let's talk about what a teleconverter actually does. Your lens actually projects a circle, not the rectangle you're used to seeing that your camera sensor shape is. So your camera sensor is rectangular in shape and actually cuts out a rectangle out of this image circle. A full frame camera projects a fairly large rectangle, whereas a crop sensor camera projects a smaller rectangle. When you stretch this smaller rectangle to fill your screen, it gives you the effective magnification of a crop sensor camera, which is often 50 or 60%. So when you use a teleconverter, it effectively takes an even smaller rectangle from this image circle, and when you put it on your screen, it effectively smears it out or increases with the effective magnification of the image. The ability to do this without image quality loss is really up to the quality of your lens and the quality of your teleconverter's optics. The sharper your lens is, the more that you can stretch this image without quality loss. If your lens isn't sharp, you're effectively taking a blurry image and making it larger. Now we've all seen this on our computer. If you take a small blurry image and stretch it, it just becomes bigger and blurrier. If you put a teleconverter on a lens that's not sharp, this is effectively what you're doing. So for a lens to be able to take advantage of the benefits of a teleconverter, it effectively needs an unresolved sharpness. That is a sharpness that your camera on the bare lens is not getting all of the sharpness that the lens can provide, such that when you stretch it optically a little bit, there's even more sharpness behind the original image that the teleconverter can help bring out. And of course, for this to be a benefit, it needs to be better to do this stretching optically than digitally zooming by cropping in more on your photo. Now using a teleconverter is usually not as good as getting closer with the bare lens. Things like atmospheric distortion from heat are actually magnified by teleconverters. Now teleconverters also affect image quality, not by the quality of the optics, but by raising your ISO. The 1.4 teleconverter will double your ISO because you lose one stop of light. The two times teleconverter will quadruple your ISO. You need to be using teleconverters when the light is pretty good. Otherwise, these costs become quite significant. Because lenses need to be really sharp to take advantage of teleconverters, it gives the advantage to big primes. These big super telephotos like this 500 f4 are amongst the sharpest lenses that are made. Prime lenses have fewer optical trade-offs than zoom lenses that are often need to be designed to be good at both a short focal length and a long focal length, and this comes with compromises. These compromises affect lens sharpness. So the sharpest lenses like 300 millimeter 2.8, 400 millimeter 2.8, 500 f4, 600 f4, these have an advantage for using teleconverters because they're just so sharp. They have unresolved sharpness left in the photos that you can bring out optically using a teleconverter. 
Here's an image with my 500 f4 shot without a teleconverter, and watch me zoom in here to show how much more sharpness there's left behind in the lens that you can still bring out. This can actually be brought out even better with a teleconverter than digital zooming. The reason that teleconverters work better than digital zooming is they magnify the image and leave you with more pixels on the target. Also, if you want to zoom in anymore, you don't need to zoom in as much as the bare image shot without the teleconverter. Now, what about zoom lenses like this Canon EF 100 to 400 version 2? My experience is only the premium zooms, the best zoom lenses can handle the extra stretching of the image that a teleconverter does. So this would include the 100 to 400 Canon lens here, version 2, the new Canon 100 to 500 for the RF mount, the Sony 200 to 600, and maybe the Nikon 200 to 500. Only the best premium zooms can handle the extra stretching. On the shorter end, the 70 to 200 2.8s can probably handle a teleconverter as well, and maybe the 70 to 200 f4s. Now, what about crop sensor camera versus full frame camera? Does that have an impact? I think it does. Crop sensor cameras like this Canon 7D Mark II have already stretched the image 60%. If you go in a little bit deeper and you need to stretch that image again using a teleconverter, it tends to have a higher impact on these crop sensor cameras than full frame cameras like this Canon R5. So in my experience, full frame cameras, because they haven't already stretched the image, can handle the stretching that a teleconverter does better than a crop sensor camera. So when it comes to image quality, the issue is really is using a teleconverter better than just digitally cropping in more. So let's take some sample photos. I've got my little owl friend that you've seen in a couple other videos. I'm gonna take some shots with this big lens with and without a teleconverter and this setup here with and without a teleconverter to show you the results. I'm gonna shoot it with my 500 millimeter lens, full frame Canon R5 with no teleconverter. Now I'm gonna put the 1.4 teleconverter on. Now my lens has gone from an f4 to f5.6, so I need to double my ISO to get the same shutter speed. Let's put the two-time teleconverter on just for fun. So now I'm gonna take some shots with my 100 to 400 EF version two and my 7D Mark II crop sensor camera. So now that I've taken those photos with both my full frame, 500 millimeter, my crop sensor camera, and my 100 to 400, let's have a look at those photos. So here's the 500 millimeter lens with the full frame camera, with the 1.4 teleconverter, and with the two-times teleconverter. Now let's compare a deep crop of the bare lens with the 1.4 teleconverter and with the two-time teleconverter. I would say that with the 1.4 teleconverter, it shows more detail than the bare lens cropped. And the two-times teleconverter shows about the same amount of detail as the 1.4 teleconverter. But remember, there are more pixels on the bird, making processing easier. Now here's the 100 to 400 lens on my 7D Mark II and with the 1.4 teleconverter. Here's the lens bare and with the 1.4 teleconverter. To my eyes, these look about the same. But with the teleconverter, I've lost many focus points and my ISO needs to be higher. In my opinion, better results can be achieved just by stopping down the bare lens down to 7.1 that shows a lot more sharpness. On some lenses and teleconverter combinations, you may actually need to stop down a little bit more for extra sharpness, which will make you lose even more light. Now, I'm very fortunate that I shoot my 500 millimeter F4 with a 1.4 teleconverter wide open, so 700 millimeter F5.6. But when I use it with the two time teleconverter at 1000 millimeters, I tend to stop down from F8 to F9, just a little bit more sharpness without losing too much light. The challenge with teleconverters is they magnify your errors as well. If your hand holding technique isn't great, if your base isn't stable, if the shutter or mirror vibrations in your camera are shaking your camera, teleconverters only make these worse. I find, for example, this 500mm f4 in my Canon R5 with a 1.4 teleconverter handheld, 95% of my images are critically sharp. But with a two-time teleconverter, that goes way down to 50%. Also keep in mind that you need to double your ISO. So when I'm shooting right before dawn, right after sunset, when it's really, really dark, I take the teleconverter off. Now let's talk about focus. First, we need to talk about whether or not your camera can actually focus at all. Many camera bodies can only focus at f8 or faster. And if you put a teleconverter on a slower lens, like a 6.3 lens and put a 1.4 teleconverter, you're at f9, your camera may not be able to autofocus at all. Even cameras like my 7D Mark II only have five autofocus points in a small cross in the center that can autofocus at f8. If I put a two-time teleconverter on my 100 to 400 millimeter lens, I actually lose all of my autofocus points. 
Whether or not your camera can autofocus and how many autofocus points at F8 it has is actually camera and lens dependent. You'll have to go to your manufacturer's website and look at the different combinations of cameras, lenses, and teleconverters to see whether or not it can autofocus with a certain combination. Modern mirrorless cameras have a big advantage here. Some of these can autofocus at F22, so they'll have a better ability to be able to autofocus with a camera, lens, and teleconverter combination that puts the F number quite high. Older DSLRs will have a harder time with this. The other issue with autofocus is autofocus speed. Teleconverters tend to slow down your autofocus. Premium lenses often slow down less than other lenses. So this 500 F4, for example, can handle a 1.4 teleconverter without the autofocus speed changing significantly. But with a two times teleconverter, it does slow down. And in lower light, it slows down even more. Finally, using a teleconverter, because it crops into a smaller part of the image circle, you actually lose some of your field of view. In action photography and wildlife photography that I do, losing field of view is a big deal. I've taken some beautiful photos of one animal when there were two in the scene, but because I had a teleconverter on, I couldn't fit them both in the field of view. So this is actually a loss and a risk in your photography. Another question you may have is, should I buy the brand name teleconverter or a third party? My view has always been to use the brand name ones. They're designed to work well and they're designed to keep as many features of the lenses and the cameras working together that are possible. Sometimes with third party teleconverters, you lose some of the features of your lens and camera combination. So I'll give you my summary in a second, but first I said I'd give you two tips if you watch to the end. Number one, you need good technique to use a teleconverter. It took me several months to get consistently sharp photos with a teleconverter, even with this lens. If your lens is shaking or your camera is shaking, the teleconverter magnifies those errors. To get sharp photos with teleconverters, number one, the lens needs to be really stable. Secondly, the camera can't be vibrating. The shutter actuation, the mirror on DSLRs, these all shake your cameras. With a teleconverter, it's even magnified. So to get sharp photos with a teleconverter, you need to stabilize your lens on a good steady base. This is an important tip. Mash your eyebrow against the eye cup. Put lots of pressure and squeeze the trigger. That way you're stabilizing the camera and the vibration from the mirror and the shutter so that it doesn't shake. I've shot a whole video on taking sharper bird photos. I'll put a tag up here, that way you can link to that video. And finally, I told you I'd tell you how to use a two-time teleconverter in a killer combo, and that's by using a really sharp prime lens and a mirrorless camera that has a feature for electronic shutter. That's because if you use a two-time teleconverter, it magnifies any vibration, but by using an electronic shutter, there's no shutter movement nor DSLR mirror slap to shake the body. And by using a two-time teleconverter on a sharp lens and electronic shutter, you can get tons of reach. I'll show you a photo now and I'll crop it in to show you how much insane reach you can get with that combination. So in summary, buy the best quality teleconverter you can afford, only use it on sharp prime lenses or really premium zooms. And if you're using it on a zoom, preferably with a full frame camera versus a crop sensor camera. Make sure you use the best technique when using a teleconverter and don't use it when the light is low and the ISO penalty is too great. And to finish up, I'll show you some photos I've taken with a teleconverter.